Yes. You feel as light and electricity and a burning feeling moves through your body. And in that moment, your strength, your toughness, your sense of calm, collectedness leaves you. Your vision blurs, and reopening your eyes around you is a black void. Below you feels like an ocean of short haired fur. And you hear as a wave small little vermin come crawling toward you. Birdie! Fuck off. You're dead, sweetheart. I know. I know. I'm real sorry. No, you're not. Don't fucking lie to me. Well, it was sort of fun to see you doing all those things out there. Glad I could impress you. Is this what you want? To be dead? Maybe. Okay. Just like that? Gonna go out a hero? I don't know if I'm quite a hero just yet. Hmm? I want to see how the story ends. But I don't think I'll see beyond that. So, you do want to go back? Just until the end. Here's what I'll give you. An option. I can send you back. All well and good. But you gotta do something for me. Or, I mean, that Abby girl really hit you, so there might be some complications the other way. She was always a good student. I didn't know you taught that in class. Well, you know, we teach about finding your true inner power. So what's it gonna be? What do you want me to do? You want the deal? I'm from the Bronx. I don't make deals without knowing the terms. Fair enough. This, uh, thing that you were blocking everyone else from, Mm -hmm. that door you fought over, Mm -hmm. you gotta get out there. And I know you got this fancy dagger and whatnot, but I want you to listen to it. To the dagger or to it in the room? 
it in the room. Daggers don't talk normally, but if it did, I mean, you could listen. It might be an interesting conversation. Anyway, the thing in the room. I was supposed to be scary. Is it going to tell me something special, something interesting? I think so. And, um... How do you feel about Earl? I think he's one of the only good men on this planet. You want him out? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now. He ain't gonna leave without someone else taking that place. You're gonna want it to be me. It don't have to be you. Hmm. It's not my meal. Your meal? Who are you to even be making all these deals and... I'm not making the deals. I'm telling you that thing out there waiting for you... That thing's hungry. Well, I can snack on Eliza for all I fucking care. Eliza's already got... arrangements. So you want me to just become dinner? Earl goes out, I take his place, or somebody takes his place. Is that what we're talking here? That's what that thing's gonna want. How do you know what it wants? Um, well, not all of us are from uh, the same place. Uh, and we sort of all connect to whoever and do our own thing. That's why I've got this really bad accent because I'm learning whatever this is you call it language English from you it's something like English but um we all sort of uh you know know each other so you got all this grand power to bring me back provided I do these things for you Why are you helping it out? What's in it for you? See, this is normally the part where I tell you to just fulfill the deal, listen to it. You don't understand. But, um, you're birdie. You're my birdie. Hmm. And I'm with you all the time. And I know you're not going to believe it, and you're probably not going to believe me either. But uh, if you think I'm bad, or any of this shit is bad, there's some shit out there that's real bad. Yeah, see, that's kind of the thing is I don't fucking care. What I care about? Seeing this through to the end. And doing right by Earl. If that's getting him out, if that's giving him a peaceful death so he can sleep. There is one good man in this world. The rest of them can fucking drop dead for all I care. <laughs> yeah. Earl's a good one, and he don't deserve none of this. I ain't giving up my life for him, but I'll give up my life to make a better place. And to give him peace. But you, these are your friends. All these other little monsters, these... We talk. Cohabitate. So that means, if you can cohabitate with somebody, you got your own wishes, desires, powers. If you can bring somebody back from the dead, well, you could take out anybody. Sort of. I, pretty, I'm a bunch of rats. I know. I got enough in me to bring you back, but 
There's got to be something in it for me. I'll tell you what's in it for you. I don't want to fight that thing. I don't want to be its meal. I don't give a fuck. I also give less of a fuck about these people I'm with. You participate in killing it? Let me and Earl walk. You can take everybody else in this room. Mm. See, Call like it a counteroffer. All right. All right. So now we're negotiating. And you see, as they say this, all of the small hands of the rats sort of rubbing together in this menacing manner. And he... All right. You want to walk. You want Earl to walk. And... I'll sweeten the pot a little bit. You want to know what happened, right? Yeah. Tula? Yeah. I want to understand all of this. Well, you want to know what happened to Earl? And your boss. My boss? Yeah. I can guess what happened to him, but if you want to talk gossip, then I'm all ears. Well, I'm not just going to offer my juiciest piece of information for you for free. I mean, it's not that juicy. He was a piece of shit. I'm glad that I think he's dead. That information ain't worth as much to me as you think it is. Well, what if he ain't dead? Well, he will be someday with the way he fucking eats and drinks. That's true. Everybody's I thought I had a leg up on you, Birdie. <laughs> but you're smart. You've always been smart. Look. I'm not killing that thing. You don't want to kill it. You oh, wanna... I want to kill it. But I'm fully well aware that me and a little street light dagger probably ain't going to be what really does it. Well, here's what happens. At least four of you gots to kick the bucket. And word on the street, other folks got their goals. So, if it's you and Earl's, you gotta buy those slots. You and you ain't gotta buy them with me. You want me to pick two? to take place of me and Earl. Yeah. You want me to pick now or later? I don't think that that thing is picky. It just wants to eat the two, and then Earl and I walk. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Enough to get it going, get it out of here, and then problem not yours anymore. It eats two. We go home all copacetic. It eats four. It eats four. Totally. Okay. But you got some useless bags upstairs. I really do. So, you know. Ugh. I mean, Sunita, you seem cool, but whatever. I mean, have a little bite. Whoever. But I'm telling you, from what I know, it's four. How strong are you at making these deals? Like, can you orchestrate something outside of here for me? What else you want? It's not for me. Much as I am going to kick ass into the mouth of that monster, I want Melody's kids safeguarded. I can do that. I understand these kind of deals. I want them safeguarded and live in happy, long lives. I don't mess with kids. And I'll make sure the other ones don't either. My son can handle his own, he's fine. But hers are too young. 
and they're gonna lose a mother and they already lost a father. They gotta turn out all right. Earl and I walk, everything else is a done deal. I'll do my best. And if I fuck it up, take me in the end. Now we're talking. All right. I'm gonna send you back. With pleasure, because I'm excited to see this shit. You might stink a little bit. And you feel, as they say this, that crawling of critters over your body, running up the leg and the hip and kind of over the chest and they are overwhelming you in this pile. Mm. And you feel as they sort of close off the space around you, your vision returns. You are back at full health. But you have just been hit Mm -hmm. by Abby. Mm -hmm. And that is where we will return to the Velvet Lodge. Welcome back to the Velvet Lodge, where Abby, you have just used your dread manifestation after a catastrophic failure. How many minutes do you have on your clock? I have zero because I've gone up to my final hour. Please add four. (laughs) And a, another distress die that adds to your current pool. The rest of you, well, Melody and Nicolette, you'd be able to hear at least. Oh. <clears throat> See, as in this motion of chaos of Eliza falling out to the front of the door, the door being slammed, Birdie holding the knife, pulling back, and Birdie, Mm -hmm. please make me a intuition and reaction check for me, please. Okay. And then let me get my distress die. Two fours on the distress die and two hits. Okay. You feel this shock of pain and light and burning and electricity and your muscles convulse for a moment. And Abby, you feel as though you just caused Birdie to lose consciousness. But you see almost in a flash, Birdie takes that hit and Birdie, still in your hands, the dagger. And Abby has just blasted you with a beam of energy. What are you doing? Get out of my way! (laughs) (laughs) Ah, you're good, you're good! Good! You're finally standing for something. If it means having to push you down then, and I'd like to push her, I have nothing else I can do, so I'll try. Okay, please make a strength and toughness roll. Um... Birdie, would you like to attempt to dodge, or...? Uh... She's trying to push me? I'm trying to get you out of the way from the door, since okay, you did so not, not fall dodge- with I just this. want to resist it. Okay, then um, I will also have you make a strength and toughness check, okay. please. Two successes, which is all I can do. Two successes. Okay, so that's... Three. Three successes. Abby, as you let out this blast of energy, you feel as though that should have worked. And yet, Birdie 
and her resilience, you swear for a moment that she lost consciousness, but popped up just the same. And as you go to push, Bertie, you stand steadfast. So what did you bargain with? I didn't bargain nothing. Who's your dread being? Who's your monster that lives inside you? You sound positively feral. Yeah. Why don't you settle with the fact that you can't do shit to me? Remember who taught you. And I'm going to turn and walk over to uh, Melody. As soon as you walk past, I open the door. There's a moment where you say that and I freeze. And it, I, it, there's indecision and there's pain and there's anguish and there's horrible realization. And then you walk past and I open the door. I'm going to walk up to Melody. I'm going to pull you aside quickly. I need you to know that no matter what, all kids will be okay. Okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Let's go. Eliza said something about a switch on the other side. That's where we're going to have to go. Nicolette. Nicolette. I'm gonna grab the dollhouse. I'm holding it. And I'm grabbing it. Have I been able to re-establish a uh, conversation? Since it has given you a task, you cannot seem to reconnect with it. Okay. In that case, when you start calling my name... What? There's a light switch. We have to flip it. Let's go. Okay. I've already opened the door and I've been running to wherever... Uh, I grab my lantern? Eliza is. Abby. And I grab the dollhouse still. Gotcha. Why don't I take that? No. Let's just go. Wait, how are you carrying the dollhouse and the knife and the gun? I have the gun on my back. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the gun out. Okay, okay. Abby, as you throw open the door, you can see now the room in front of you is filled with red light cascading through a ginormous room. And in front of you, the catwalk sort of extending before turning into sort of an elbow over. And you can see Eliza holding that wound and crawling her way past. As the door is open now, are the rest of you following Abby out? I am racing out to get to Eliza to start treating her wound. So all of you are exiting? I'm following out last, uh, just slowly. Okay. As you all exit this room within the basement, you see you are on an upper floor, but still underground. Above you, a sort of... A uh, grid of metal hangs across the ceiling, leaving a little bit of space between it and the top, where you assume the bottom of the floor would be of the next floor up. You can see strewn across the metal are bags, burlap sacks filled with different meat and bodies hanging from the ceiling. Below you, the concrete floor strewn about are boxes and random assortments of things. The walls are dirty and grimy and it smells like decay and like blood. And you see from the ceiling an arrangement of hooks and from one of them a large twisted body covered in long, thick, white fur, the legs seemingly broken at the joints, dangling below this creature, the neck extending and bones separating from each other in the spinal cord beneath the skin, this large hump protruding from the back as the head is turned completely around, and the hook 
lined through the bottom of the jaw. You see on the head, a long, wet tongue hangs from the mouth, eyes wide with fear and starvation. From the forehead, you see these tatters of flesh dangling from where it looks like bone or antlers have been ripped violently away from the skull. And as you all enter and Eliza crawls away slowly, you see those eyes focus on all of you and the dagger lit in your hand. I'm immediately to Eliza, helping her up. Keep her down, keep her down, keep her down. I start treating her wound, uh, applying pressure, uh, doing what I can uh, with my medicine bag to attempt to keep her from dying. Okay. I'll stand protectively over the two of them, and as the two of you come out, you got your bait, go! And as you are going to fly down those stairs to the switch, who's going? Uh, two of us with the dagger. Okay. So, as you step into this room, and you get a better look at it, please open your eyes. <gasps> oh. oh my god! God, that creature. Oh my god! And you see, because of the light switch... <gasps> god! Okay, okay. This is amazing! <laughs> okay. I mean, it's looking right at me. I had to. I had to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, so, so, that's me. Are those bodies? I told you they were bodies. Uh, uh, Nicolette. <laughs> Where am I? Everything just kind of blurred into a horrifying image. You are right here. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm. Mm. So, you're that's, at the that's melody. melody. You're on the stairs and I'm at the top of the stairs. You, Safely why are you so away. close to, to the fuzzy, fuzzy happy? I don't know. Why are you so close? Because <laughs> she got the knife. Okay. So, as a, for the players and not um, my characters, we're not going to be moving the people around. This is just so you can get sort of a diorama sense of what's going on. And so you can see what you're up against. This is gorgeous. This is Horrifyingly so gorgeous. Eliza is with me, correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm also with I, them. I had come out the door last. Okay. So, as the red light of the upper lanterns are now filtering into this room in front of you, and all of you have ran out of the first room, which, if you would like to see... Stop it. Oh my gosh. The, there's a dollhouse of the dollhouse. That's amazing. <gasps> All right, out of character for a second. That is amazing. Okay. okay. If I could please have everybody roll initiative. Oh, my initiative got it. I'm going to re-roll six of these. Okay. Nicolette. Three. Three. Abby. Four. Four. Birdie. Zero. Zero. Melody. Six. Six. All right. So, now that you have all moved out of the sort of office space of the upper level, making your way out onto the sort of catwalk that wraps around the entirety of the upper floor here. The creature 
here in the basement is crawling and moving around the top of the metal grates above it. And you can see as one hand reaches up to push it off of one of the hooks that it's lodged under its jaw, it then swings to another hook and reattaches in another place so that it might reach you. Who is... Who is still on the catwalk? I you think too? technically me as I just came out the door. Okay. I think we're all... I think yeah, I all are. Yeah, I'm assuming Eliza didn't make it off the catwalk, so... Okay, who is farthest from the door then? Probably... I ran first, so I would imagine I'm on one side of Eliza, you're on the other. Yeah. Okay. Nicolette, you see as this creature is moving across the room, the eyes sort of shot red with both the light above you and also assumedly some sort of medical condition as it is moving forward swiftly towards you and you see one of the arms sort of rear back and move to swipe at you if you would like to attempt. I'd like to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> That is a composure and coordination. Okay. Which you may upgrade with athletics if you have it. I do not. Can we see the switch from where we are? You can see the switch. Okay. Five hits. Five hits. Okay. So, as you go to move towards Eliza and you see this creature sort of rearing back at you, you sort of move swiftly out of the way and you watch as that hand passes right by you. <sighs> Melody, what are you doing? All right, I'm heading down the stairs and I can see the lever. Mm -hmm. If I were to try and use the dollhouse, would I still be able to activate a dread manifestation? In what way are you trying to use the dollhouse? To communicate. Um, I would say it would have to be one or the other. Okay. Which also your other manifestation was still up, correct? For the healing? healing yes, I'm, it uh, went out. Are you full up yes. then? Yes. Oh, great, okay. So um, I wanna know. Then I will attempt to establish connection with the dollhouse. As I'm walking, I stop and reach into the dollhouse with my mind. Okay. How many distress die do you have currently? One. One? Please roll it for me. One. One. On, are you going down the stairs? Mm -hmm. As you're traveling down the stairs, you are hearing also as both this creature and it moving around those rungs on the ceiling is echoing out in this dung, 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 all around the room and now your footsteps and everybody else is sort of hurriedly moving around in this space that sort of wobbling of metal reverberating over all of the walls. I think that's a word. Mm -hmm. um, and you pause for just a moment to try and establish some sort of connection, like how you had seen Nicolette do in the room, and you don't hear any response. Shit. And then I'll catch up to, to Birdie. Okay. Abby, what are you doing? I'm going to take a quick glance at the two people with daggers. What do I think the two of you are doing? What would it look like you're about to do? I think for Melody, she is following Birdie. And as of right now, I think Melody thinks Birdie is going for the switch. Yeah, I'm... Birdie is... As far as you see, like, visually assessing the room. Okay. Uh, kind of trying to figure out where, like, the pattern of where this thing is going versus what's a quick way down mental evaluation. Okay. You got her? Yeah. I'm going to move away from Eliza and Nicolette. 
as far as I can, but stay on the catwalk. And I'm gonna start to stomp my foot on the metal and say, you weren't gonna talk before, you wanna talk now? Come talk to me now. Okay. I'm just trying to get this creature's attention. Okay, please make me you moved away from us, right? Yeah. Okay. I specifically moved away okay. from <laughs> Just the, sure. the two of you and away from where they're headed for the lever. Okay. But stayed on the catwalk. I will say either. I will say your charisma and you may use vigilance here as well. Okay. a crazy good dodge, by the way. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I rolled all sixes and uh, re-rolled, because I have eight, so I re-rolled another six and a two. Damn. Uh, I added two minutes to use double think to okay. double my successes, so that's six. Six, okay. So you begin sort of pounding your foot against the metal, and all of you now are hearing as a sort of loud drumming is beginning throughout the room, and it, like, are you still on the stairs, or you've made it all the way down now? Uh, I am staying with Birdie, so if Birdie is still on the stairs, I'm still on the stairs. Okay, so all of you are still sort of feeling as well the sort of, like, vibration of the metal underneath you, and you see as this creature's eyes shift from the two with the dagger. You said you got how many? Six. Six. Oh, well then it doesn't even make sense anyway. And he sort of turns and looks and begins ringing his way over towards you. Nicolette, what are you doing? I am going to grab Eliza, mm -hmm. put her into a fireman's carry, and run back into the room with her and then start tending her wounds. Okay. Would you please make me, I will say strength, mm -hmm. and you can use toughness or endurance here. I'll use endurance, please. Okay. It's four hits, so um, a very phenomenal success. Okay. So as you reach Eliza and where she is sort of lay crawling over the floor, you sort of pick her up into this fireman's carry and you hear her go, oh no, no, it, it's, it's all right. And you just I rush just towards that door. And as you, you're able to reach it, open it and place her inside and you begin working. Yeah. Is that all you'd like to do with your turn? Yeah. Birdie. Okay. Um, so I can see the switch from here. Mm-hmm. Okay, from the configuration of the room, where is the switch? It would be against um, this fourth wall on this side. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the creature is away from the side of the catwalk that we're on over there. Yeah, there's. he's sort of moving back towards Abby at this point. Okay. Then I... I'm going to use transmute. Okay. Uh, going to add four minutes. And I'm going to transmute this middle section of the catwalk into a second set of stairs down to the switch. Okay. So, as you sort of extend forth this power within you, now, all of you are able to see, as in this moment, almost from behind Birdie, appearing out of nothingness, a swarm of rats begin manifesting and building their way up 
to this catwalk until as they reach sort of formation to match what the other staircase looks like, they sort of snap into place and you see another staircase appear. I'm going to run down to the switch. The creature, having had its sight sort of recentered on you, Abby, begins sort of unhooking and rehooking along the ceiling on its way to you, these long sort of arms with these thin fingers curling over each one carefully as it reaches you. It is going to attempt to hit you. What's your nightmare? Is this your nightmare? Are we in yours now? And I will I will dodge, but I will be trying to distract it the whole time. Okay. A dodge is a composure and coordination, please. Uh, that would be a common success. I got uh, two hits and one on a d4, so. Okay. So one, essentially. One, okay. As this creature starts crawling towards you using the ceiling to its advantage, it swipes at you. And though you are speaking to it in confidence, seeing as it comes closer to you, you see along its body, across the sort of wrists and down the arms, down the chest and the sort of legs, they had begun processing him. That hide ready to be taken and yet not fully pulled off. And it scares you. And you feel a sort of fear set in as you are hit for four points of damage. <laughs> I need you to make a roll with your highest stats available to you. Whatever they might be. Um, although resilience and wit. Okay. Uh, including uh, distress dice? Yes. Uh, three successes, so uh, common success. Common success. As this creature rears towards you, you feel that same fear in you of that night when you had first seen the cube, the gelatinous, amorphous thing. For the rest of the scene, you have another trauma trigger, which is this creature. Please keep that in mind. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Melody, what are you doing? Um, Melody looking between what's happening with Abby, Nicolette running into the room, and Birdie now running straight for the lever. I think for a moment, Melody freezes. And I think the sound of Abby getting hit kind of jump starts her again, and she whips her head up at Abby. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Be better. Not as good as you. And when, as she looks away, she's going to activate her dread manifestation. Okay. Called Drown. Sorry, Abby. Will you specify, please, what this dread manifestation does? Um. The drowned manifestation, every hole in your body begins to spew gallons of water. You take four damage, ignoring any armor, and you are blind, deaf, and muffled for 30 seconds or three combat turns. 
Are you casting it on her? She's looking right at me. And there is no save against it. How much damage does it do? Four. Abby, what are you at? Uh, that's eight. Okay. Out of twelve. You feel <laughs> as your body begins filling with what feels like water. <laughs> that similar feeling to drowning the gelatin inside your body. Does the manifestation specify whether they know you've casted it on them? Uh, not necessarily, but I think Melody wasn't hiding Okay. what she did. I know who has water powers in here. And you are spitting up water and it burns. <laughs> is that your turn, Melody? It is, and she begins repeating, Skylar, Tyler, Angelica. And she just keeps repeating that. Abby, your body feels as though it is submerged, and you are staring right at the creature. You gain two minutes this round, but you still have a turn. Abby thinks I wanted to wait a minute longer. She's going to activate her 11th hour dread manifestation. I don't think I need to see or speak to do it. Okay. Which is halt the march. Time stops for an entire scene uh, in a 40 foot radius. I can exclude any number of targets that I want. The only targets I am excluding are Nicolette and Eliza. And then I will spend whatever time I need to. You said three rounds? Neglect. You hear, as though you are inside this room, that ringing, the moving, the shuffling, things rustling, the metal around you clanging and bouncing off of walls around you pauses. And all you can hear is Abby struggling and Eliza in front of you, taking your help. Is Eliza stable? Eliza looks about as good as someone with a gut wound could do in a basement full of meat. Can I? So, appropriate allows me to see something out of reality. Okay. I hear her drowning, basically. Mm hmm Can I appropriate the water out of her body? Not all the water, just what's in her lungs, what she's drowning on. I would say for this, yeah, you could. I am appropriating the water from her lungs. Okay. I will say, because technically three rounds have passed, um, though assuming you've heard this, only the first round would count as two minutes because Nicolette is helping. So you would take three minutes for still being in front of the creature. Um, I'm at 12. You're at 12 minutes? Tw hours. This, this put me at midnight. This was the last thing I was able to do. Okay. Is that pause time just before? Oh! 
So, mm -hmm. for this, you will not move past the 11th hour yet. However, from now on, you have a permanent, any one on a d4 will count as two fails, and you gain two extra distress die to your pool. However, after that first round passes of you trying to exit this water from your body, you feel as something warm and comforting reaches into your breathing space. You feel it. And it is gentle, and you feel as it almost pulls the rest of this water out, and you throw it up onto the floor, but you can breathe. I will... It's one dread manifestation per turn, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mine lasts for the rest of the scene. Yeah. So, essentially, until I dismiss it, everything cool. else is frozen. Okay. I don't know how you want to play that. I have an if, idea. If we want to stay in, in rounds, but... Is there anything else you would like to do while time is frozen? Oh, yes. Well, you, you would see me after everything. I'm walking into the room. What's going on? How is she? She's... Seems like she's stable. Eliza. I'm all right. I, I just need to sit down for a second, I think. We're going to get you out. Okay. I have an idea. I've got all the time in the world. Can you get her out of here? No, you have to. I need to stay here. Or else this thing is gonna start up again. And I'm not letting it go until I'm ready to go with it. How do we get out? You just leave, don't touch anything. Don't move anything. Just get up. Everything's blocked. Get back up the stairs, go. Up that damn ladder gets to the place where you can get out of here as soon as you can. You'll know when it's time. And if you want to come back, that's fine, but get her. I will have done the one thing I said I was going to come here to do. Get her out of here. Come on, Eliza. Okay. And I will, again, pick her up, and I will leave. Stepping outside of the office room, you look, and you see where the ladder was, and you see only a wall. Is the hole gone, too? Yes. Also, I will note, if the catwalk is indeed set up this way, you would have come out to just those stairs going straight down. The catwalk just going straight down. As I am realizing, I have given us no way up. Well, if the if the hole up at top is gone, then other things have happened. Wow. They're frozen, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in this room is frozen. The only things are you and me. All right, Eliza, stay in this room. You got it. Let's go get some knives. We can't grab them. We can't touch anything or move anything until I let it go. <sighs> My plan was for you to get out of here with Eliza and then to walk down and be at that switch when everything falls apart. And I'll still do that. 
but you're gonna have to come up with your own plan. I have a very bad feeling about this. <sighs> now? <laughs> I appropriate the dagger from another reality. I can appropriate dread manifestation, or dread uh, artifacts, but it says it comes at a great cost. <laughs> okay. That's all it specifies? Yes. You just took over to hour nine? Mm hmm. Well, I, after casting this, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Nicolette. Mm hmm. You once again extend sort of your hand through realities that warm fire feeling sort of around your wrist and you feel that handle wrapped in leather and moss and wood and pull a third dagger from another reality and as you look at it in the blade you see a reflection of yourself. And you do not look like you. You are small, covered in flame, full of fire. And you hear in your head Hey, Nicolette. It's me. Hi. Um. Yeah, you don't. I don't really get a lot of this. And I'm really sorry to do this. And you feel a wind surround the sides of your face and over your hair and around your body and suddenly you are underneath that pass once more looking at this small flame creature and for the first time since you've seen it since interacting with it you realize the features, the face, the voice is you. And as your face moves, this creature mirrors you in perfect time. meeting like this might be payment enough. Can I get one other person out? I can try. I need to get Eliza out too. I, um, 
You wouldn't let me tell you. Tell me what? Dada. Well, that, um, that we're the same. And, and I kept everyone from you. Why did you do that? I've been so lonely. Because I love you, Nicolette. <sighs> and no one was good enough for you. You could have let them try. I did. Are you gonna leave? No. Okay. When you're gone, I'll be gone too. And you see in this swirl as that previous childlike figure morphs to your size and figure and is still enraptured in flame. Sort of. You and one other person. And your vision flashes back. <gasps> what did you do? Take this. Eliza, we're getting out of here. Abby, how many distressed eye do you have currently? Uh, four. If I don't have any minutes, because I, ro I rolled over. So I just have the four that are my permanents. Okay, so you have four total? Yeah. If you'd please roll them for me. That's a four, that's a three, that's a three, that's a one. So two fours. A three and a one. Okay. I will allow you to take one more action before your time runs out. Okay. Or your time continues. I really only need to do one other thing. <laughs> it sounds like you're getting out of here. So she. I'm sorry. I tried. I really did. I didn't want you to have to go through what I did. But you're gonna have to deal with it now. And I hope you deal with it better than I did. Okay, Abby. I'm gonna trust whatever is about to happen will happen. I'm gonna turn and walk out and down the stairs. And I'll pass by the two of them, frozen. I'll stop in front of Birdie. And I am reaching for the lever. Yep, and you can't hear me, you can't see mm -hmm. me here. <laughs> you couldn't have just waited. You couldn't have just waited. I'll walk past Melody. I hope your kids are safe. But if you made a deal, and your kids are next. And I hope I'm wrong for their sake. And I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna climb as far as I can up the creature. Okay. To the point where I can be ready to stab as soon as I let everything go and happen. Okay. And I know that once it happens, I might not still be here anymore. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. I'll look back up. Are you still here? I'm ready. 
you hear in your head, I've got you. And I pick up Eliza. Okay. Time to go. Okay. And is there any um, change in the room? Any indication of where I should go? You assume that you are waiting for... Got it. Okay. For time. For time. Snapping back into place. Abby, ready with the dagger. Nicolette, carrying Eliza. Bertie, you are there, right next to the switch. You wish to turn it? As soon as time comes back, falling forward and yanking it as she was mid-action. Okay. Melody, what would you have been doing? Uh, I was <clears throat> heading to join Birdie, but I think in this moment, as time comes back and I'm walking away from the creature, I hear that Abby isn't coughing and drowning anymore, and she whips her head back to see that she's not there, and then looks up at the creature to see Abby standing there. Okay. Birdie, as you hand already halfway to the lever, do turn. The lights do turn again. But this time, instead of red sheen falling onto the ground and objects around you, it is stark white. Abby, having climbed onto the creature, you see as its eyes sort of shut momentarily as it adjusts, Realizing that you are there as well. Is there something you would like to do before it reacts? Stab it. Okay. Please make me a strength and either toughness or endurance check. Before I roll this, since I've rolled over to midnight, do I have any seconds or minutes to spare? Or is I do it... not. That is a common success. How many hits over? Or how many hits? I hit twice, but then I had a one on one of my d4s, so... One. Okay. As you raise this knife in the air, you stab down, and as the creature is readjusting to the light and moving and squirming, you sort of slice kind of into the shoulder and you can see underneath the sinew and blood beginning to pour, and this caked blood and mash just spread over the lines. You can see it pulling apart and crusting and flaking over as this creature lets out this terrible sort of yell. You feel... Let me put us both out of our misery. You feel as it, with one hand, reaches up and takes you and throws you across the room. You take four <sighs> points of damage. I drop, the knife goes rolling. And that's all. You are down? Okay. Just gotta go down knowing that Eliza got out and maybe this thing will still die. As this happens, the creature's eyes reopen, looking at this wound on their sort of chest area and looking around at all of you. They sort of, the other hand pulls up on one of the hooks 
and you see as they hang there for just a moment, you are not who I expected. And as they back up to drop onto the floor where you all are, the back of that coat sticks onto a hook behind them, seemingly on accident. And you watch as the skin flays from the muscle. And you see as the fur. <gasps> oh. Oh, that is horrific. I'm gonna sleep great tonight. The creature lands back on the floor and you hear it release this terrible, agonized, pained screech as it lands. Before it speaks, Abby, you are down. Mm-hmm. Would you like to die? I ain't coming back from this. Okay. I did what I came to do. If I come back, it's gonna be even worse. Okay. In a heroic movement of the dagger coming down, a smart move playing through the group. All of you are back up to full health, and you reset your clocks to the beginning of the hour you are at. Wow. Them? Mm hmm So all of our minutes and seconds. Yep. Birdie? From beyond the grave. I apologize, does that mean we're at zero minutes or one minute when you say reset? We'll say zero. Okay. <laughs> the creature sort of realizes this coldness on their muscle, their skin having left, and they look, who are you? Um, we were brought here, and we just want to get out. You do. Some of us already are. And I want to turn to the door, and I want to try to see through realities. And I want to see into a world where the door here, this door, leads outside. Are you using a dread manifestation for this? I am. Okay. I am using the madness angle, and I'm looking for this reality. You feel as you, now with this new understanding of who you are and what it is, and yet there is a sense of something else as you are looking for this door, you see it leading outside, almost directly off into that cliff that the lodge sits on the edge of. You know it'll lead you outside. And this confidence imbues in you for a moment. And then you hear in your head, I'm really sorry, Nicolette. And Eliza becomes very 
warm suddenly on your back and you hear that voice not good enough and you two see as almost instantaneously Eliza's body catching on fire what are you doing am I on fire you are not okay Let's make this interesting. I am going to use, if you'll allow it, <laughs> the doppelganger dread manifestation. Okay. It turns me into an exact genetic copy of someone. Okay. I am going to turn myself into Bram Velvet. Okay. As you do this, you see the creature stiffen and look at you. You cannot fool me, witch. All of you hmm no that's funny it's funny you reminded me of my last meal and how wonderful it was tell me what do you think you know? Not a damn thing. I don't know. All I know is I need you to eat her. Please. Who? Uh, and Melody at this point just drops the knife that she has in her hand on the ground and points to Abby. This creature's hands sort of tap. So you intend to release me? I intend to release myself. What happens to your children? You just burned a woman alive. Very well. And you see the creature reach forward to Abby's body, raising it to the gullet, and the head turns back around and that neck elongates, and almost in this solid sweep, Abby is gone. And the creature sort of holds for just a moment. I must cherish this. You, Melody, is it? Yes. Mm. Melody, I. I've grown to despise music, but there was once I enjoyed it. How do you all imagine this happening? <sighs> this meaning? What do you want? I want to leave. I fulfilled my end. And she looks away from this creature. I fulfilled my end. You hear in the back of your head. I know. Let it happen. Okay. 
And you, little bird. Dear. Yeah. I know what you want. In a way, I know you do. But know that you know what I truly want. So whatever outcome makes that happen, I'll accept it. You see the creature extend a hand towards you, Nicolette. Would you like me to take that? I've got it. Very well. I closed the door. You are outside? No, the door was open. I'm standing in the doorway. Okay, gotcha. Oh, you're you're visibly looking like you're gonna leave? I just closed, I'm, I'm in the doorway to the room upstairs. Oh, to the room upstairs. I just closed the door. Okay, I got confused with yeah. the realities <laughs> thing. Um, if I see you standing in the doorway, um, there actually is something I want to do. I don't know if we're still in an initiative order at this point. We're not an initiative. Then seeing you do that, or seeing that you're in the doorway now that we have time to assess the situation. Um, can't find things on my sheet now. Um, I am going to use transmute to change a piece of the catwalk into a steel cage for you. I'm in the door, so, okay. Yes. Oh, I see what you're like, saying. Like a full body cage. Okay. I would like to dodge the cage forming around me. It doesn't give a time frame on how long it takes to form. So, I'm not sure how quick that would be. That would be your call. Okay. How many distress do you have currently? I have two. How many distress do you have currently? None. Okay. I will have you... I would like to use Karma Thief, which gives me five auto hits on an opposed roll. As Bertie, you begin to form this cage around Nicolette, almost like her body turns to gas and her form flares for a moment. She steps outside of it. I want to step deeper into the room. Okay. Out of line of sight. Creature sort of all of this in fighting. Not in fighting. It's called equalizing. I appreciate that. Some of us see others for who they are. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, we're here. And I'm sure you want to know what's going on. I do have questions. You see the blood and sinew and muscle moving and sort of constricting around this body as it lays over sort of onto its where it, its bottom would be and slouches against one of the walls. It is very nice to conversate again. Please. What's your name? I have many. Some call me the beast of these woods. Some cannot name me. Some used to worship my mortal moniker. But, since you have been invited here by the Velvets or Associates, they have called me Gralic. Gralic. Sure. Did they... Pardon me if this, um... 
You're not being rude. Out of line, I wrote. Will you just sitting by your onesies in a cave and they just came and got you? Admittedly, I am not the best companion to have in the woods. I took from them what they so desperately desire. Approval, game, food, pride. Grandfather Velvet, as they call him. He found that I was overpicking my share and came to collect. And when he found that I had a magnificent hide, you see him motion to it still stuck on the hook on the ceiling. His motives changed. What do you want? What I want is to live here, eat my fill without worrying of someone coming to tell me I've had enough. What do you consider your fill? As much as I please. Well, there is, you know, the issue of supply and demand, and eventually you take too many people, and then somebody's going to come looking. and then No one else lives you. on this mountain. They'll find a way. I don't know how much you know about technology. They can have the Coast Guard out here in maybe a couple hours. But now if you can be a good boy and eat your greens on a timely manner... The only reason I was caught was because I was busy doing something else. What were you doing? There is something worse than I. Ain't there always? Beneath the mountain. And though I admit I am greedy and insatiable, this creature is far more selfish and ruthless and mean. That's what they were talking about. It wasn't a deal, it wasn't a bargain. He warned them. Mm hmm You warned them about what it was and they just took you. They took me. And when I arrived here, they began to break down my skin and body, starved me so that they could do what they needed. And when the hunters realized that perhaps they possess a few more brain cells than one Bram Wolfgang Velvet, they turned on him. And in doing so, he fell to ruin the other creature, creeping corruption seeping into the very foundation of this lodge, as I have been unable to apprehend it being stuck in a basement. You want to be out of the basement? I would love to be out of the basement. Out of the basement, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go trap it and then what? I will return home. To your cave. Mm -hmm. What'll keep you in that cave? Wanting nothing than what is supplied by this mountain. The mountain gives you enough. I'm. I'll be quite frank with you. I'm making sure that you're not going to go on a rampage on the nearby town. No. However, I will be honest. As either this works for me or I die, 
as I see that not only have you collected all of the pieces of one dagger, but a couple. Very good. Thank you. I will need to regain my strength. And unfortunately, humans possess the most essential nutrients. I have had my fill of one. Delicious. But I should divulge in perhaps another three. A question for you then. Two, actually, if you don't mind. Sure. What keeps you from going in that office? You calmed right down as soon as we got in there. Sort of. I have tried to wriggle my hand inside to turn on these damn lights. But I was too weak. And that, and he points to the dollhouse in your arms. If I may be so bold, I sense there is something uh, wrong <laughs> with me just having a bit of strength back. But I know Augustina. She was going to be the one to taxidermy me. How frivolous. You know that she won't leave this house. I have a proposition for you. She spoke very fondly of you. I'm sure she did. I'll tell you what. You may leave as you wish. But you melody you would like to have a future with both Augustina and your children? I must. Take over the lodge. Take over how? Live. Raise. Grow old as mortals do. She's not exactly in a mortal state right now. What future is there for her? You gonna reverse all that upstairs? Can you? I will still require food. But perhaps I can spare a head and take two more. Should you agree to stay? And perhaps when the moon is full, you leave the door to this basement open and allow me my fill. And if I do this, everyone else gets to leave except for Two others? Sure. And I will pick the unlikable ones, like Sunita or Alexander. Alexander's a good choice. I'll do it. You agree? Are you sure? As long as my kids? No. As long as anyone who lives in this lodge and any guests under its banner are safe from you. 
I will keep your lodge and your mountain safe, Melody. I agree. You see as this creature looks at the door that you have. You've created the other door outside, correct? As this has been going on, mm-hmm. I have been appropriating items. Okay. I have appropriated eight items. Okay. I am in my 11th hour. Okay. I am going to use my 11th hour ability, which is, I apologize, World Walker. Okay. I peer across all iterations of myself in the multiverse and adopt the success enjoyed by the version in the most favorable, similar situation. That would be getting out of here. Okay. As this conversation takes place, you, Nicolette, pull that energy again, and you step almost into a wall of fire and emerging from the other side you are standing outside the lodge in the cold in winter and Eliza with you how is she doing? um you can see right now because uh, her body is providing. I drop her in the snow and roll her around. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and she's sort of. I don't We're... know what's going on, Nicolette. We're getting you out of here. Okay. We're getting out of here. Birdie, what are you doing? In this moment, has the ceiling door opened with the ladder? As you have finished talking, the creature is pulling that door that Nicolette had created and is opening the walls of the basement around you, large enough for them to slide and crawl their way out of You may leave. I'm gonna pack my things. And I'm gonna join you. No, Birdie. I can't ask you to do that. What am I gonna do? Go back to my studio apartment? With my shitty secretary job and pretend like this all just didn't happen. I'd rather have a friend beside me that I can say, Hey, do you remember the guy that Abby beat into wet paper towels on the ground? Okay. There's no way you make friends after this. You're all I got. And to be honest, I got a lot of connections. And I hold grudges for a really long time. I can't wait to see that. I'll collect things and I'll be back in time. Okay. I'll see you. I promise I'm coming back. And I promise I'll wait. (sighs) Goodbye, baby bird. See you later. And I will walk out, immediately taking a notepad from my purse. And I am going to write down uh, Nicolette Veritas and proceed and as well writing Eliza's name. And as I walk, I will proceed to write an expose on the things that both of them have done in the real world.
Okay. To type up when I get back to my office. Leaving the basement, you make your way up to the front of the house following this blood red trail left behind by Growlick. And as you make your way to the front door, you can see piles of snow moved aside for him. The front door slightly ajar. He reaches up and grabs onto the antlers above the front door and pulls them from the mount. Placing them back on the head, you see as the skin begins to reform. And he... This may be uh, distasteful. You see as he reaches inside the house, the arm searching for just a moment. You see past the window curving to the dining room. Small doorknob in his hands, pulling it open gently. I don't want to ruin the interior. Gently grasping onto Sunita's body. And you see as he drags it past the window, she looks exactly as she did in her portrait. He eats. And he reaches back in again. Oh, I suppose I've got a less than live one. And pulls Alexander's body and eats again. He sort of mm. I look forward to seeing you again at the lodge. And you watch as he sort of resets the bones in his legs and stands to this sort of grand stance, almost like a moose on its hind legs, these long arms dangling next to his body. And he looks at the lodge, and he thank whatever higher power there is than I, and begins walking away towards the forest. As he walks away, Melody just watching him just begins to hum the same tune that she's been hum humming the same time, and she's going to activate uh, convalescence on him. So he's going to begin to heal as he walks away. As you're singing, you hear echoing through the mountain a similar tune to yours, and it echoes in this loud, almost omnipotent song throughout the land in front of you. Nicolette. Your mind feels uneasy, and yet the most assured it maybe ever has, as you know this new part of you, you know what it is. And what truly could be worse than yourself? A couple of months pass. An expose is written on your name. How do you decide to continue with life? Prove it. The expose will contain all information 
Detail. Exhume the body. Examine it. There's no signs of being poisoned. Your legacy continues. And from parts of the world, there are women who celebrate you and revere you whether or not they know it is true. Others feverently insist that you are a monster. But you continue with life. And though your doctor position is less than stable, you find some peace in knowing that your secrets are out, that you know this part of yourself. I tell the authorities where they can find Melody if they want to investigate further. Very well. And I never return to that lodge. Birdie. You return to the lodge eventually? I return, I set up a nice room for myself. Um, my son comes to visit when he's on summer break. Okay. You take up a place in the lodge, a nice room that always has sun filtering in. Your son comes to visit. An earl teaches him to fish. And though he complains and moans about it, you are excited to see another man in your life have someone to look up to. And occasionally he cares for the pig. And I will have taken to writing horror stories. As I'm no longer a secretary, uh, she has started to write novels of horror to publish under a pseudonym. Melody. The once high standing Velvet Lodge now is known as the Ubel Lodge across the country. And folks know, do not approach it. And for a while, there are authorities who come and seek. But they never leave. They never leave. And those who may slip through the cracks speak very highly of you. Something about your charm. Your the sturdy old dogs around here. <laughs> your twins and your daughter eventually are brought up, and you and Augustina teach them to knit and sew, as good women should. <laughs> but you also teach them some dastardly hobbies as well. I teach them almost everything I know. <laughs> they will never see what's behind the curtain of this world if I have anything to say about it. And sitting above the fireplace now, as you walk into the Uba Lodge, there are no longer portraits throughout the house of the individual hunters. Above the fireplace is a single portrait of everyone who resides in the house, standing together. There's one more thing I would like to do. Sure thing. I buy a grave plot and a headstone for Abby. And I go pick up Eliza once a month and we go lay flowers on her grave. That's the only contact I have with Eliza because she can't be a friend. Hmm. 
somewhere in this world or perhaps the other that some of you have touched into or drawn upon, you sense there is always a presence there telling you when you make a mistake or when things get hard or when saying I'm sorry is difficult and you and Birdie and Nicolette and Augustina and your twins and your son and your daughter and Eliza all recall in those moments to be stronger. And that is where we are going to close out the Velvet Lodge. Thank you.